Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And today we're going to take a look at the uh, progress bar element inside of ClickFunnels uh, 2.0. And what I did is I made some modifications to it, uh, taking some ideas from what they have in 1.0 and then also doing some animations on it. So let me just show you what this looks like here. So we start off with only 25% in the background or in the foreground, the red, and then we have that move across the screen. And then also I have some text on here and we move the text across the screen and I I also added in these icons as well. So as it moves across the screen, everything's moving, everything's rotating. Then when it gets to this point here, the text changes, the icon changes, and the content drops down. And so I'll show it to you here one last time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into 1.0 because like I said, this is where some of the inspiration came from. And so let's just click on this open up this element and in here you can change the width, you can change the size, you can do a lot of stuff like that. But also you can come in here and you can change what it looks like. So you can do like a simple progress bar or bold light. You know, can put the stripes on it. And then this one down here is you can animate the stripes. So all this comes straight out of 1.0. So what I did is I came into this page and let's uh, inspect this page right here or inspect this element. And so we come down here to the progress bar and I said, well, okay, how did they do this? How did they animate this thing in 1.0? And I just came in here, started looking at the code and I said, okay, well, here we got this linear gradient, this 45 degree linear gradient. Um, that is the background image. So let me grab that out of there. I'm going to need that. And then we got our background size. Okay, I'm going to need that. And we're going to definitely need this animation here. And then also down here, we needed this transition. So I just basically grabbed all that code and popped it all into 2.0. And that was my starting point, at least as far as the animation of those lines moving in the background. Now you're going to see here that in the case of click funnels, they're moving from left to right. I actually changed the direction and moved them from right to left. I thought it worked better with the text going the opposite direction from uh, what the stripes were going. And so again, this is what I came up with in the end. And you can make this taller and you can make it different sizes. And I'll show you all that here in a second. So this is how it opens up in here. So let's go into the element itself and we'll let the page load up here real quick. And so it's now loaded up. So let's take a look at the element itself and see what we can set in here. You, of course, have your top margin and you have your percentage right here. And I would say set that to the percentage that you want to start with, but we're also going to do it in the code. But as the page loads, you probably want those two numbers to match. So in my case here, I'm starting at a 25%, mostly because I needed enough room to be able to put the, the, the text in there and the icon and be able to see it. And then you can also set the background color and the progress bar color. So let me just show you that on the live page again. So the background color is going to be this white right here. And you can see there's a bit of a shadow and stuff around it. And then, of course, the red is what comes in over the top. And then you can also um, decide whether you want it on the inside or whether you want it on the outside. So there it is on the outside. And you already saw it on the inside. So let's just save this. And let's reload the page. And so now there you have it on the outside. So that's kind of a cool effect as well. And it automatically changed the colors from the white to a dark color. And so you could modify that with some CSS code if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to change it back to inside. And um, otherwise, you know, now that I say that is where is the text color in here? So here's the text color. And in my case, I have it set to white. So um, I'm not sure if you do it on the outside then how you would, other than CSS, how you would uh, be able to change that color because it doesn't change when we go from, let me see, let me go back to outside here. Oh, it did change the color automatically. Okay. All right. So you can change it all right inside of here. That's good to know. We'll set it back to inside. And then, of course, you can set up your shadows, your borders, all that kind of stuff like you can with any other element, including your typography. And uh, 
Um, this what I have in here right now was the presets on the elements, so I didn't really change anything at all on that. Uh, a couple other things here. Let's look at this here in the code. I came in here. I gave it an ID of progress bar. I also gave it a title of progress bar. And then you have to make sure you click on update and have it turn dark like this to make sure that it has been saved. So we got that in there. Only other thing I have on this page that I did was down here I have a hidden row. So there is our hidden row. And again in there all I did, well I, that's right, I, I made an ID of hidden row and I gave it a title of hidden row. What I like to do whenever I'm giving something an ID, I also change the title to the same thing so that in the layout I can just very easily come down and find exactly what I'm looking for in the layout right there. So we have all that. So now the only other thing we need to take a look at is the code for the page. So let's take a look at that first. And what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at the JavaScript code first because um, it's really kind of much less complicated than the CSS is. And so here we have an ID, I'm sorry, a class of progress label. So let's come over here. Let's inspect this element. We'll inspect that right there. And we're going to say, okay, where is our progress label? Well, here is our progress label. But also, if we come down inside of this element, we have another progress label. And in this case right now, progress label hide is the lower one. And that's because there are actually two different progress labels in here. One for the top slider and one for the bottom one. So when we switch these out, and we can do that right now, let's just save this. And I'll come back into the page and we will reload this. So right now the bottom one said progress label hide and now the top one will say progress label hide right there. And so all we're doing then is what we're saying with this line of JavaScript code, we're saying find me the class of progress label, which is right here, it's actually in two places. And then what we want to do is we want to prepend, which means put before, we want to put before that the icon right here and this is something you can go over to font awesome you can get the icon there um, any one that you want you can put in here this one in this case here is fa sync dash alt it just meant that it was a little bit fatter than the regular sync the alt one's a little bit heavier in the font size so all we're saying is we want to add that we want to add that um, icon to the progress label and then also here we say that we want it to pulse. And in this case here, I didn't want it to spin, I wanted it to pulse, I thought it was a much better effect, especially with all of the, the stripes moving in the background, so we did FA pulse instead of FA spin on that. And then what we do, and, and then as that thing works, so all that does is it puts in the icon, and then it also makes it spin around and pulse it to be more accurate. So let me just do that again. So all this does here is it adds in the icon right there and makes it uh, pulse around like that. So then after that, what we're gonna say is we're gonna set a timeout. So we're gonna delay for four seconds. And the reason why is because it takes three seconds for the red bar to go all the way across. So I figured three seconds plus one more second and then we'd be good to go. And then when we do that, what we want to do is with that same, that same place that we were at before, the progress label, we want to change the text to congratulations. And again, I put a couple spaces in front of here, probably only needs one because I think it'll only give you one no matter how many you put in. And then we're going to do essentially the same thing up here. We're going to say progress label prepend. This time here, we have a different icon. So it went from the spinny thing to this little smiley face for the congratulations. And again, this is the font awesome code for that smiley face. And then we're going to say down here, take that hidden row, take that element that has the ID of hidden row, and we want it to slide down. So instead of just having it appear, like shockingly, in this case here, it appears, but it slides down from the top. So it's like that nice, nice transition. I like using uh, slides whenever possible or fades or things like that just to give a nicer transition. Now we're going to get into the CSS, and this is where... We start getting into something that's a little funkier. They're known as animations and keyframes. And so I'll walk you through exactly how we do it. And there's actually three different keyframes 
in this element right here. We have the progress bar moving across, we have the text moving across, and then we also have the stripes moving actually the opposite direction. Stripes are moving from right to left, the other two items are moving from left to right. So in the code here itself, we have two elements that we're applying all these animations to. We have the progress bar class, and then we have the progress label class as well. So in here, here is our class of project uh, progress label. Okay, so it's right here, that's our class of progress bar, and then right below it, we have our class of progress label. So these are the two elements that we're going to be affecting. So in this case here, we have our style width of 25% because that's what we set the element to initially, is that width of 25%. And so what we're gonna do then is we're going to apply the animation to it, the animation in turn, calls the keyframes and runs the keyframe right there. So first thing we did in this progress bar, we put in two different animations in here. One for the progress bar to make it go from 25% over to 50%, and then we put in a second one for the progress bar stripes, which basically the animation there is uh, it takes the um, takes the animation itself, takes those stripes, takes the the linear um, the linear gradient there that we're going to talk about in a second, and moves it 40 pixels. And by moving it that 40 pixels, it gives it the illusion of moving, and then it just keeps repeating that infinitely. So we just have this infinite loop of this thing moving 40 pixels, and then it'll start over and move another 40 pixels. And so it looks like it's running continuously when really it's uh, restarting itself every two seconds. And that's what this is about here. So we got the duration. The duration for the red bar to go from 25% over to 100% is three seconds, but the animation for the stripes is two seconds. So it moves that 40 pixels over two seconds. So if we were to change this and make it one second, the uh, stripes in the background would move a lot faster. The animation timing function is linear, so it just means start to finish is going to go exactly at the same speed. You could put in stuff like, you know, ease in, ease out, you know, things like that, and make it uh, make the animation slightly different. But in this case here, we just want it moving continuously across the page. And then uh, we have animation iteration count. Again, for the red bar, we want it to go across one time. With the stripes, we want that to continue every two seconds to repeat itself over and over again. And then here, animation fill mode said forwards. We say forwards because we want it to go to the end and then stop and stay there. If you didn't do that, the red bar would go all the way across, get to the end, and then snap back to 25%. But we don't want that, nor do we want that with the linear gradient moving. We want it to move to the end, stay there, and then just repeat itself over and over and over again. So then down here we have for our background image, we have exactly what I pulled out of 1.0, and we have a linear gradient, it's at a 45 degree angle, and then the rest of this here defines the stripes itself. So basically it said, you know, make it like 100% or 100% and then make it a lesser opacity, and that's what it does, is it essentially changes the opacity. Here we got 15%, 15%, uh, but it changes the opacity, and here it's you know, transparent even down here at the bottom. Then we got a background size of 40 pixels. Again, I just took that out, left it alone, didn't change anything to it. And then the transition of the width and the height, it uh, transitions over 0.25 seconds. Do I really need this line in here? I don't know. I haven't tested it without it. So if you're repeating this, you can play around with these two lines. And of course, you can play around with what those stripes look like as well um, as you go along because the 255, 255, 255, that just means that it is white. So it's white with a transparency of 15%. Um, and the rest of it, um, you can you can Google um, anything you need to know about how to set up a linear gradient. That's not really what we're talking about in this one. So here, okay, let me go back up here to the top. So you see here we got progress bar, comma, 
progress bar stripes. Here we have two items. So obviously the three seconds goes to the first one. The two seconds goes to the second one. When we only have one item, it covers both of them. So if you only, if you, if you have one, uh, one value that covers both of the animations, then you just have to put it in one time. So then down here we say with our progress bar, all we're going to do is take that width Take it from 25% over to 100%. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, progress bar stripes. Again, we're going to start with a background position of 40 pixels, and we're going to go to zero pixels. So it's going to start over here, move this way, and I know my hand's going backwards uh, from what you want it to look like. So then the progress label inside of there, what we had to do is I said, we want to give this a position of relative. So make it... We're going to move it on the screen, but we're going to move it relative to where it started from. And in this case here, we're just going to say left 10%. So if we didn't have this in here, I'm pretty sure the text would end up right here in the middle of the screen. Well, what I said is, okay, take it from where it is and just move it over here and have it start off 10% uh, of the width of the element, 10% from the edge of this element right there. So it brings it in just the 10%. And then we do a transform translate, which means bring it back essentially half of, well, not in this case here, bring it back 12% of the width of itself. And that number there, you're going to have to kind of play around with depending on how much text you have in here. So you got to kind of look at it and go, okay, I want it to end up in the middle at the end. And so do I change that a little bit? I've, I've, playing around with this, I was anywhere between 10 and 15%, depending on how much text I had in there. So you just got to kind of play around with that number a little bit. Then we have our animation name here, a progress label, which again, of course, matches up with this right here. And then we have a duration of three seconds. So that's going to move across in the same amount of time as we move the red bar across. Um, animation delay of zero seconds. Actually, I don't even need that in there. Uh, animation fill mode forwards again we want it to stop in the middle we don't want it snapping back to the left hand side and again we're going to have the timing function be li linear so it moves um, without any easing in or out or anything like that so then down here on the progress label we're going to match this up to start off with of left of 10 percent right there and then we're going to go to 50 percent so we're going to start 10 percent off the edge of here so like, let's say about right here, and then we're going to stop over here 50% off the edge. Now, if we left it at just 50%, it would end up with the left edge of the text being right here in the middle. That's why we got to do that transition, I'm sorry, the transform translate of minus 12% to bring it back this way far enough that it lines it up so the text is centered right in the middle of the element. So I think that is it. I think I've covered everything on here. I know it gets a little complicated. And this, uh, this background image, like I said, uh, linear gradients, you're going to have to go look that one up or use one of the, um, one of the tools. Uh, what's the name of the one I always like to use? is like gradient.io, I think is what it is. Uh, it's my favorite, uh, favorite element for that. But like I said, in this case here, I just pulled it right out of 1.0 because I wanted it to match up for that. So... That's all I have for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know.